Conroe, Texas. Welcome to the GCN Show. From day seven of the Route 66 bike race, welcome to the GCN Show. From Singkarak Lake, Indonesia, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. On the show this week, Peter Sagan takes the world title for a second year in succession. But how exactly did he do it? We wrap up that as well as the rest of the elite race that took place in Qatar. Yeah, we have got folding e-bikes. Yep, you heard that right. We've also got Robin Williams as our latest cycling celebrity, although not uh, quite as tenuous this time. Plus, we've also managed to fit in all of our usuals as well. Oh, thanks, mate. Have Sorry. a sip of your tea. Yeah. Before it goes right. cold. Cheers. It's time now for caption of the week. Last week's picture to be captioned was a picture of BMC in the team time trial. Yeah, and the winner out of many hundreds of entries in our caption competition was Toby Baldwin, who said this, I'm British, I'll ride on the proper side. Very good. Very good. Slightly controversial use of the word proper yeah. when it comes to sides of the road, but you know, we'll forgive you for that one. Well done, Toby. Get in touch with us via Facebook with your address, and we shall send you out a GCN Camelback bottle, Ooh. one of the clear ones that we do have at the office, yeah. thankfully, Si. This week's photo is this one of Eddie Merckx at the recent World Championships. I'm going to get you all started. Ooh, that looks catastrophic. If you think you might be able to do better than I, you can leave your captions in the comments section just down below. I like that one. I thought that was good, didn't you? I mean, that was, that, it that was actually was really catastrophic. Good. Yeah, that was good. No, but without a cue. Yeah, just, yeah, just leave it. Racing news now, and of course it's dominated by the World Championships which were held last week. Now in the men's individual time trial, it was Tony Martin who capped off a fine five-year career with Etik's quick step by running away, to be quite honest, with the men's individual time trial, putting a stonking 45 seconds into last year's winner Vasil Kirienka of Belarus and one minute and 10 seconds into Jonathan Castroviejo of Spain. Now that win helped Germany top the medals tables and also brought him level on four wins in the men's individual time trial with having Cancellara. It's quite an achievement, isn't it? I also love the stat that he would have beaten the entire Astana team, yeah. uh, posted ninth in the team time trial that's on his insane. own. Yeah, that's some serious horsepower, isn't it? Right, in the women's individual time trial, uh, it was the USA who added Rainbow to their gold from Rio, but this time it wasn't Kristen Armstrong, it was another veteran, Amber Nieben. She's 41 years old and she stormed to victory, although by just five seconds really over close. second place, Ellen van Dijk in the Netherlands, and then just three seconds over Australians, uh, Catherine Garfoot. Mm -hmm. In the women's road race, as predicted, it finished in a mass bunch sprint. However, the winner wasn't a rider on many people's radars. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Well, we didn't mention her on the world's preview yeah, show. Good point. More forwards us. Uh, anyway, it went to 20-year-old Amelie Dideriksen from Denmark. Now, she won the World Championships as a junior just two years ago in 2014. She timed her sprint perfectly, came off the Dutch train, and Kirsten Wilde, who had to settle in the end for the silver medal, whilst Lotta Lepisto of Finland took third. Now, there was another competition, a rather important one last week as well, and that was the GCN predictions. Oh yeah, how did that go? Well, for the first year ever, we have a medals table and podium. Now Dan... Is that presumably right? because we've actually predicted stuff right? <laughs> sort yeah. of right. Yes, yes. check of, us out. Kind of once. Now the medals table is as follows. Dan, you top the medals table with a single gold medal after predicting Peter Sagan would win the men's road race, which he did. Now I'm in the silver medal position by predicting well, two well, silver medals, thanks very much. So Matt Stevens is second, Cab Silver and Kirsten Bilden Silver, but you predicted side so Tom Bonin yes. would win, but he ran away with a bronze medal. So basically, we got the whole podium. Me and up. Tom, both of us with bronze medals. I'm pretty happy with that. What about last year? Talking about Tom. He, oh, went, yeah. he went rogue again, didn't he? Yeah, he likes to attack from quite Tom, far yeah. out this last year, didn't yeah. he? Into a block Edwin, generally. Mm. Mm. Now, if you're wondering where our report of the men's race has gone, more on that later on. But I thought worth a mention that it wasn't just the World Road Race Championships weekend, it was the first ever digital World Cycling Championships Whoa. this weekend. Yeah, that's right, Zwift held their first ever World Championships. 875 competitors from 56 countries. It's a big field. Yeah, really cool, isn't it? Two different types of competitions. There was a team event, which in the men's was taken by Russia, and then in the women's, it was the USA from Korea and Australia. Yeah, well remembered, Si. Uh, in much. the well, individual well, events, it was HG Becker of Germany who won the men's, whilst Rachel Elliott of the UK won the women's. Are we entering next year, do you think? 
Well, do, you think, do you think last year counted? Because we raced on the world yeah, course. Maybe you were the you online top. world champion. You were, so maybe you should yeah. get some rainbow bands. I'm going to take that. Team. I'm absolutely going to take, take that. Yeah. So this wasn't the first ever digital world championship. It was the second. Because that was following last year's storming performance. It was just the first with decent participation, wasn't it? 192 heart rate. I don't think you've seen that kind of effort in some time. Do you want a bit of beef jerky? No, maybe ask Sai. I don't think I better do. I think that would be disrespectful. Tech of the week this week, and we've been delving once more into the murky world of Kickstarter. And this week is the rise of the folding e-bike. Yeah, three different designs of folding e-bike currently vying for your investment. So first up, we have the lightest and most affordable folding e-bike in the world. Next, we've got the first ever self-charging folding e-bike in the world. And finally, we've got the best folding e-bike in the world. Well, that seems like a clear choice. That yeah. one, you just go for that, wouldn't you? It certainly does. Well, would you? First up is this: the lightest, the Air 33, with 35 mm. mile range. Okay. Three modes, so you've got normal, pedal assist, and full throttle. Full throttle mode. <laughs> Comes in at a very reasonable 800 bucks, which is approximately 800 pounds these days, unfortunately for us Brits. 33 pounds in weight, that's your title, which equates to 15 kilograms. So that's pretty light for a folding. No, it's not relatively bad. light and relatively affordable. Yeah, yeah nice way. Not bad though. On to the first ever self-charging folding e-bike, should I say. This is called wow. the Velo Bike, and it is actually the lightest, lighter than your one. Ooh. Comes in at just 26 oh. pounds, which is a little under 12 kilograms. So that is light, yeah. Seven now, it doesn't offer an awful lot of extra power assist. It's just 250 watts, but it does give an 18 to 30 mile range in turbo mode. Well, it's got turbo mode as well. Yeah, it's yeah. better than full throttle, isn't it? All right then, guys, what about this then? The best. Oh, yes. Go on, this, the stats. This is the Go Cycle 3, and it was actually designed by a former McLaren car engineer. Right. Sounds good so far. Yeah, it does, and it looks pretty darn cool yeah. as well. Look at that. Oof, that does look cool. Yeah. It's just under 16 kilos or 35 pounds, so it's still pretty light, but it's got a 500 watt motor. Oh, I like oh. the sound of that. Oh, yeah, and it's got a range of about 50 miles, depending on how hard you pedal, but then it's eight card, it's two wheel drive. So the motor powers the front wheel, and then you, the rider, power the back. Cool. That sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. We'll move swiftly on to another fierce debate, actually, and uh, we'll finish Tech of the Week this week with a shout out to a great article on Vela News. They uh, covered Tony Martin's World Championship winning TT bike, specifically his wheel and tyre choice, because he used clincher tyres, not Ooh, tubular wow. tyres, okay. which he has done, he's dabbled with in the past, but perhaps most interestingly is that he used a 24C wide tyre on the front and a 26, a whopping 26 on the back. Apparently it was because, although uh, it's slightly less aerodynamic, a 26 on his wheels, because it's at the back of the bike, there was less of a penalty and it was more than offset by the decrease in rolling resistance that the wider tyre offered. Oh. So then you get a little bit more fuel on the fire. Definitely. It's time now for what is almost our highlight of the week. It is hack forward slash bodge. Sad but true. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah, we're doing like diamond, isn't it? Oh, All right, yeah, first up, this one. It's it's a belter. Look closely, Orlando Adolfo. This is his friend Marco with his little daughter on a patio chair strapped to a panty rack. Yeah, don't try this in at home, I think, is the uh, go home message. She looks comfy there. there's not, not going to be a YBF lie. moment. A lot of you Brit viewers will know what I mean. Uh, poor Josh Bennett broke his arm and got a plaster, but he's turned it into a Team Sky Arm warmer. Oh, good work. Mm. Very good. What does indeed. YBF mean? Uh, you've been framed. Ah, right. Okay. Oh, what are the UK still? <laughs> um, from Marden Larian on Facebook, this is a quite incredible fixie. It's like an aero, it's like a TT fixie, but an old school TT fixie with a flexi stem brazed on to top of the fork crown. That it's looks certainly nuts. It looks like, a, it that looks like a bicycle unicorn, doesn't it? I dread to think what what kind of handling it gives. Anyway, probably marginally better than this yeah. one, which is just an absolutely astonishing. From Jordan Stewart on Facebook. It's an old giant, isn't it? I don't really know what he's done there other than got no handlebars. Imagine you put the two of those together, the stem that comes out of the head tube and those handlebars that How are not handlebars. How's steering there? That's, that's dodgy. Oh, look at but this one from Tima Pinar. Now, you know that feeling you get when you snap your rear mech hanging and you haven't got a spare oh, yeah, one? Well, he did that just one day before a race. So Ooh. in desperation, he soldered a nail onto it and apparently it worked quite well. Simple but effective. That yeah. is a very good bodge, that one, I think, yeah. Uh, right, this one, this looks brutal, and I think it is, actually, sent in by Phil Jones, <laughs> MBE. He said, uh, this is a fixie, so a, a track bike with no brakes, but they've got a disc rotor on the bottom bracket axle, and uh, that 
provides the braking. Sai, si, is that safe? Uh, probably safer. Uh, mm, it's quite, uh, yeah, if you wouldn't it's want to move your ankle in too far, would you? Isn't it? But, uh, yeah, still. Well, yeah. You've got the chain ring between your ankle and the uh, oh, yeah, so and disc right. Uh, Nick Blower hack. has Do made a hack. pannier rack or found a pannier rack on the streets made out of old forks. Looks pretty good, that. Mm, not too bad. Looks like a fish. Play. And this is from Andrew Pease, 21 on Instagram. And it's a rather they funky look, they look looking amazing. pair of Oakley jaw bones which have been dipped. They actually, wow. they look pretty beautiful. Yeah, I tell you what, I'd wear job. those uh, whilst riding my new Colnago Master Pista totally. painted by Futura 2000, I would. Right, this next one uh, is uh, Marc uh, Chasson, who has uh, pimped his rollers, for want of a better phrase. He's added uh, a radiator belt, which he says, and he's got a graph to prove it, adds 35 watts more resistance mm. to his rollers. That could be a new section of the show, pimp your rollers. Yeah, although I'd suggest if you want resistance when you're indoors, just throw your rollers out the window get and get a turbo trainer. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, never mind. Definitely. I like what you've done there. That's Last a, a one hack. now, and you'll be particularly pleased about this one, Si, because with people not being able to get their hands on the new GSN Camelback water bottle, some people have decided to make their own. This one came in from Mark Hudson. It's, it's not my GSM fault. water bottle. Ni fault, nice hack, Mark, but it's Maybe. not my fault. It is. It is, mate. There's a, there's a dossier. So if you want to if a make your... A dossier, a dossier, I can't say. I can't. I've, I've said too much. It's not going to investigation. I can't believe you guys are ruining it. Hacked or bodges next week. You should use the hashtag GCN hack. Seriously. All platforms it. of social media. It what actually wasn't me, you know? It's a dossier. For the second successive year, Peter Sagan won the Elite Men's Road Race title. There's only five other riders who've actually done that in the past. Now, it was a completely different victory to the one he took in Richmond, Virginia last year, but exactly. How did he do it? Yeah, well last year you will probably remember that he won solo, attacking in just the final few k's and holding off what was the remnants of the bunch. But this year was very different indeed. And the action started an awfully long way before the finish line. Yeah, that's almost an understatement really. 180 kilometres to go is where the wind played its part that's and absolutely split absolutely. the peloton into pieces. And Sagan, by his own, his own admission, was the last rider to make it into that front echelon. Now, apart from that, I think there were three main things which really helped his cause over the final 180 k's. The first of those was they left behind three of the best sprinters in the world, all from the same country. So Marcel Kittel, Andre Greipel, and John Degenkel were all caught out in the second group. Secondly, Belgium had six riders in the front and they were determined not to let those Germans come anywhere near the front of the race again. And finally, Sagan actually had quite a lot of support from his teammates at the front. In fact, his entire team was there at one point with Uri Sagan, his brother, in that front echelon. He got dropped a little bit later on, but he did have Michael Kolar there right until the bitter end as the perfect teammate. It's a cracking little unit they've got, but from that point onwards, Surprisingly to me, Peter Sagan didn't really have too much to do because Norway and Italy then joined forces with the Belgian squad trying to keep the bunch together, or the group, the 26 rider group together for a sprint. And then as well, well, pretty much all he had to do was make sure that he got the last kilometre right. So, how did Sagan win? Well, it was a combination of great positioning, Great tactics, very, very strong legs. Yeah, that's an important one. Yeah, isn't good legs. Very strong legs. And then he probably also had a bit of good fortune benefiting from the other team's tactics as well. So nothing particularly complex, just being the best rider in the world. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We'll start Cycling Shorts this week with our celebrity cycling segment. Now, there's nothing tenuous about this one. The late, great Robin Williams was a massive cycling fan and 87 of his 100 plus collection of bikes are currently up for auction. So we suggest you take a look. It's kind of bike porn and also a fitting eulogy to the great man, if that isn't too weird. Now we've been taking a look. What do you reckon now? What's your favourite bike from I took a look at all 87 thumbnails and I picked out this one. It is a Schwinn Pea Picker Crate Stingray Child's Bike from the 60s at some point. Now it is a little bit too small for me to ride but I just think that looks so cool it is and that would be great cool. adorned on my wall I think. It certainly would. Well I'm going to go for, I've had a good look, the Kestrel 500 SCI from the 1990s. Now basically because it's eccentric, just like Robin Williams was, but also it has Mavic Zap electric gears, yeah. which famously didn't really work at all. Also, it doesn't have a seat tube. It kind of banned. embodies sort of the style and design of bikes in the 90s. They just used to just think very laterally. 
yeah. not overly successfully. I seem like a random choice, but yeah. no, fair enough, it's I lucky. get that. All right, mine is something of a classic, I think. It's the Colnago Master Pista, but this one was one of a collaboration between the bike shop La Carrera and some legendary graffiti artists. And this particular one of Ron Williams is one of just a handful that was painted by Futura 2000, Ooh. who I'm sure you'll all be familiar with as a, a genuine legend of the uh, street art scene. And this, I just think, like that is beautiful. You it could hang that on your wall. What oh, amazing! You right, bid. you're gonna bid street art. Oh, I was gonna bid, and then when I looked again today, it was twenty-two thousand dollars. Mm. Yeah, no, so uh, let's it's a bit out of my price range. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, right. Anyway, moving seamlessly on from bikes as art to bike paths as art. Really? Yeah, if I may. That was seamless. Thanks. How do you fancy a solar-powered glow-in-the-dark bike path? I think this please. is great. I know, so do I. Look at this. This has just been built in Poland. It uses a synthetic material that stores the sun's energy and then will glow for 10 hours. And look at it, I just think that's beautiful. It is a thing of beauty, you're right. It's I could lovely. see a problem with that in the UK, that we'd only get it to glow for 20 hours in total over the course of the year. But then again, I guess yeah. Poland's Point. winters aren't that yeah, much better. Yeah, harsh. But it might, you know, it might be like a, an attraction when it finally glows one night and everyone will be like, oh my goodness, yeah. the bike path's glowing, yeah. let's go ride it. Like the like summer a, solstice. Yeah, exactly. I think that'd be cool. A party or yeah. something. Staying with UK for a second, we reported a couple of weeks back about the fantastic efforts of a UK police force in relation to prosecuting drivers who endanger cyclists out on the road. Well, that for us is great, but it has proved to be a little bit unpopular with certain other road users. Now, a lawyer in the UK, nicknamed Mr. Loophole, because he specialises in getting drivers off sort of uh, motoring convictions. It's quite a nickname, that, isn't it? It is, Loophole. but he is very, very famous, actually. He won't talk about it now, but he's extremely famous at getting people off. Very good at it. He's entered the fray and has accused the force of ignoring cyclists' bad behaviour citing a complete lack of convictions for riding on the pavement or the sidewalks. Sounds like you might want to hire Mr. Loophole for your failing defence in Bottlegate. Yeah. Or... What do you mean, it... defence? It's expensive. I haven't been charged. There's been no nothing stuck. Not Absolutely yet. Absolutely nothing Not stuck. Yet. Right, back to Mr. Loophole though. He might have a point in that you wouldn't want different road users to be treated differently. Yeah. But West Midlands' response to him, oh, this is brilliant, it's I absolutely good. love it. They said, and I quote, we do not consider it to be in the public interest to proactively target such behaviour given the health and wider community benefits of cycling. Well done. Brilliant, what a brilliantly common sense response to that. And I think, aside from Matt, they are probably, almost definitely, my favourite police officers ever. If you can think of any police force that's really pro-cycling and is doing loads of great stuff, I think they deserve a shout out on GCN, don't they? So Definitely. make sure you let us know in the comment section and we will give your local police force a good shout out. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to hear, wouldn't it? Right, on to some more racing news now. Now, the great Australian track cyclist Anna Mears has announced her retirement at the age of 33. But agonisingly for her, she was just a little bit too late in announcing yeah. her retirement to make it onto our options for the illustrious Lifetime Achievement Award on the GCN Awards show. Still, her tally of six Olympic medals and 11 world titles should soften the blow somewhat, though. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, there's been some fantastic news in the world of women's cycling, with the news that the World Tour has been expanded to 21 events mm. for 2017. There's two new stage races added, but even better, get this, the women now get an Amstel Gold and a Liège Baston Liège yeah, to add brilliant. to the first really ones. They've news. got a proper Ardennes week, which is wonderful news. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, some other news actually in terms of racing calendars. The UCI have announced that they're tweaking the track calendar, or rather the track programme of events. Uh, the women, again, will now have more events. They'll be doing the same number as men, which is about time about to, time, we yeah. may say, uh, with the addition of the Madison, which is really cool. But then also, the Omnium is changing from mm. six events down to just four, and that will take place on one day as opposed to two. They really can't decide what they're doing with that event, can they? No. Uh, I'm sure the UCI no. know what they're doing though. And talking of the UCI, they have announced that in 2019, the World Championships will be held in Richmond. Richmond? That was a couple of years ago. In Yorkshire. There is in, a Richmond in There, there is, is a Richmond in Yorkshire. Yorkshire, yeah. Yorkshire in the UK, which is great news for UK cycling fans and anyone that wants to fly in. Now, there's no doubt there'll be more people stood on the side of the road spectating than there Definitely. were in Qatar last week. But we're Down, wondering... there are more people in this office than there were in Qatar last That is week. true. But we're wondering how many fans is too many on the mm. side of a road world championships. Maybe we'll get to find out in 2019. Mm.
Now, finally, we want to give a little shout out to Marcel Araga. He is one of Yam Cycling's roster that hasn't managed to find a team for 2017. And so he's having to call time a little bit prematurely on his pro career. But in order to celebrate what he's done, he went out for a brilliant retirement ride. And this is a true epic in the Swiss Alps, okay? He did 260Ks. 10 hours and 20 minutes in the saddle. He racked up 6,850 meters of ascent. But he wasn't soft pedaling, because if you have a look at his stats a bit further, 191 max heart rate. Wow. Pretty punchy. And 99.8 k's an hour top oh, speed. Oh, just off 100 k's an hour. Yeah. Did he have a cafe stop? I think he did, actually. Oh, well uh, several. But look at it. And beautiful That's as well. Brilliant. What an amazing ride. It's time for GCN's Wattage Bazooka. <laughs> For the first time ever in Wattage Bazooka history, we're going to rename Wattage Bazooka and call it a Bravery Bazooka. BB. And this week's Pro Award goes to Uri Sagan for his fantastic ride in the World Road Championships at the weekend, where of course his brother won. He made the first echelon in that furious Ferrari when the bunch split into bits, made the front, then bravely later on dropped back to get a bead on for his brother and never regained the front group. Oh, no. nice. It's brave brutal, brave bazooka. It's brave, right. absolutely very brutal. brave indeed. But the viewer wattage bazooka goes to Ian Martin, who was nominated by his wife Lucy. Now it's just a recreational rider, but recently he built up to a 200k ride and then a 324 kilometer ride, wow. which he Everest did a local climb in the Czech Republic. Wow. But what I particularly like about <laughs> Ian is that he has got a wattage bazooka t-shirt, but he will only allow himself to wear it when he's done a ride which he thinks is good well, enough wear to wear pride a now, Ian. Definitely wear it with pride now, Ian. Well done. Fair play. Don't forget, if you want to nominate somebody else for the viewer What Is Bazooka next week, it's this hashtag right here. <coughs> Dom has chosen one sole tweet of the week this time around. It comes from I Am Cycling professional rider Larry Warbass, who posted this picture saying, really looking forward to 2017. Now our detective skills are not up to that much, but we have a hunch that this might mean he signed for the new Irish Pro Continental squad, Aqua Blue, for 2017. Oh, uh, okay, I get it. Because I, I thought he was like trying to say that it was going to be a lucky year, but I was just looking at it again, that's a three leaf clover, yeah. not four leaf, Larry, what's going on? Comment of the week now, and we absolutely love reading what you leave for us underneath the videos. And here are some of our favourites. We'll start with Xenophon54543, who, uh, under the recent cyclocross tutorial from Sven Nace, said this, Sven is great at this. He is articulate and explains in depth. Good video. It was an absolute banging video and a great tutorial from Sven. Not quite sure what he's suggesting about the rest of us when we give our insights yeah. on tutorial videos. Are you sure we like to read all the comments? Sorry. That's a good point, actually. Mm. All right, next up, hey, what's up, guys? Said, saw sign bath, but he didn't say hello. What's going on there? Well, he walked in on me in the bath, and I was so no, shocked. In the bath didn't... where we work, not in the bath. That was the other guy that got locked up shortly after. Ah, uh, right, okay. Sorry, I didn't. You've got to say hello more forcefully next time. I would never blank anyone. Yeah, mate. <sighs> Knob. Give us a word. This is from Chuck Finlay underneath uh, the news show last week. Chuck says, the one thing that many of the UCI band bikes have in their favour is that they would offer plenty of storage compartments for Dan's hair products. I don't think we like reading these likes. comments Good at all, do we? Would make the bike very flammable though, wouldn't it? It would, it's got to go up in one. Yeah, exactly. If you went it. anywhere, maybe if you put out too many watts and just combust. It'd be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, no, no danger of that. Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got how to fuel on a winter ride. Cold weather riding does place more demands on carbs. And by that, I mean that for the same effort, you'll be burning through more calories when it's colder than when it's nice and warm in the summer. And with that in mind, you need to make sure that you consume enough carbohydrates during your ride. On Thursday, we look at the top five differences between a road bike and a CX bike. Hmm. Cycle across. Indeed. On Friday, it's another episode of Ask GC Anything, and Saturday's Pro Bike will be coming to you from Tom Last, direct, not live, but direct at the Abu Dhabi Tour. Surprise Pro Bike. Mm. Yeah, and Sunday is a proper double header for you. We've got the latest GCN Presenter Challenge, Whoa. and then we've also got that Bell Helmets Tour that you should have had last week, but you didn't. And then Monday, we have our usual Maintenance Monday slot, so make sure you check out that one. And Tuesday, we're back here. Oh, uh, yeah! For more of the same, but with a twist in that it'll be different. Huh? 
It's time now for Extreme Corner, and this is actually the most extreme thing of the year. It's the Red Bull Rampage. Rampage. Does wow. not get much more extreme than that, does it? Those guys are actually speechless. Bonkers. Anyway, it is almost the end of the GCN show, but before we do leave you, you probably haven't failed to notice that we are all three wearing brand new hoodies, and they are available over in our shop right now, which you can find at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Good to have the hood. hood up there. Thanks very much. Just want to illustrate that it was a hoodie. Well, following on from Extreme Corner, if you're brave enough and you want to take it to the next level, Oh yeah, so it doesn't get much ago. more extreme, but yeah. it does. How about clicking on this video, we tackled the descent in the Dolomites of the Campo Longo. Or for five ways to keep you and your bike safe, why not click just down there, take it down a little notch. Yeah. Safety first. You'll need to after that, it's just insane. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel, the Global Cycling Network. To do so, all we've got to do is click on the globe. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up down below and share it with your mates. Share and like. Last word. Again.